All right, let's talk about the basics of dilution ventilation in a volume of air in a room. The principle that we're looking at here is conservation of mass. We have this cloud of air that's in the room and mass is neither created nor destroyed during the process of contaminating and decontaminating a room. So basically contaminants just move into and out of that volume of air. So they come into the air uh, by the generation rate, that's this G, the number of particles that we're pushing into the air. They fall out of the air by a deposition rate that's just falling out due to gravity. Uh, in light gray, I put this inactivation rate for a radioactive or a biological particle. They'll have a half-life or a, a, essentially a dying time. And we can remove them. If we have filters or some other product that we can use to remove the particles from the air, then great. And then we can also move them out of the room, mass transfer them out of the room uh, with exhaust air, which is dilution ventilation, primarily what we're talking about. Um, we usually express these not in terms of the actual number of particles or the actual mass of particles in the room. We usually express it in a concentration, so it's going to be particles per meter cubed or you know, micrograms per meter cubed or something like that. And so once we express them in terms of concentrations, uh, we do that for the air flows as well, for the exhaust air. Then we also do that for the supply air. Uh, that makes each component of this easy to express in terms of a, a volume or a volume flow and a concentration. What we're usually doing though is we're looking at mass flow rates into and out of the room in order to determine those concentrations. And so we're looking at generation rate as a function of time, uh, the supply air, you know, contaminants coming in the supply air as a function of time, deposition as a function of time, inactivation as a function of time, removal as a function of time, and exhaust air removal as a function of time. So those are all based on a function of time. Um, and once we sort of have that, us mechanical engineers use Q to talk about airflow rates. So when we have an airflow rate, we call that a Q. So supply air, exhaust air, we write that in Q. The other thing that we can do is when we're talking about a filter, we're generally talking about a removal efficiency of the filter um, or one minus the removal efficiency of the filter of the air that goes through that filter. So in order to talk about just dilution ventilation, just dilution ventilation, uh, we need to make some key assumptions. First, we're going to assume that the supply air is uncontaminated, so the concentration of whatever in the supply air is going to be zero. We're going to assume that there's no filters in place that are recirculating, so that removal rate will be zero. Uh, we will assume no deposition and no inactivation, so these particles that we're talking about here will stay in the air indefinitely. Uh, and then the very key assumption here is that we assume that the concentration of particles or contaminants in the exhaust is the same as the concentration of the particles or contaminants uh, in the air. So we assume the air in the room mixes up really well, it, it, it becomes homogeneous, and then when we remove it, um, we're removing a portion of that homogeneous mixture. Uh, once we make all those assumptions, then our conservation of mass equation becomes very, very simple. Right? We just have a generation rate where we're pushing particles into the space and then we have a uh, removal rate, this dilution removal rate where we're removing particles from the space. Uh, we can put units on that. And I did this in terms of particles per meter cubed. Uh, you could also do this in terms of particles per cubic foot. That's not very common. You might do this in micrograms per cubic meter uh, if you were talking about particulate mass um, or something like that. But once we have units on it, then we can do math. And here's what the math kind of looks like. Um, if you have, if you're generating particulates uh, into a space at a certain order of magnitude, then you're going to see a concentration happening in that space that's um, one order of magnitude below or two orders of magnitude below the generation rate. So if I'm generating particles at 10 to the 6 particles per hour, then in a very poorly ventilated space, 0.1 air change, um, then I'll see 10 to the 5 uh, particles per meter cubed in the space. In, in an, in an air, uh, space that has one air change, then or two air changes, I'll see a concentration in the 10 to the four uh, particles. So two orders of magnitude essentially below what you see in the generation rate. Um, in order to get another logarithmic reduction, in order to get down to 10 to the three, 
uh, for that 10 to the 6th generation rate, I would need to go up to you know, 10, 20 uh, air changes per hour. In order to get a 2 log reduction, um, I would need to get up to 100 air changes per hour. So um, dilution ventilation is a tool that's very useful for that initial, you know, going from a poorly ventilated space up to this one or two air change um, space. Um, that that's very useful. Very few of our built environments actually have or can get 10 or 20 air changes in the space, and so that's less uh, likely to be useful in terms of pure dilution ventilation. Uh, and then there are, there's almost no spaces that have 100 air changes, and dilution ventilation would be a very poor tool for that. If you need to express, if you need to remove particles at more than one log or two log, um, then you would use filters. A HEPA filter is 99.9. 7% effective, and so that's a four log reduction going across a HEPA filter. Uh, dilution ventilation kind of pales in ability compared to that.